With the proliferation of misinformation and disinformation, media outlets are increasingly being held to account to provide evidence-based information and clarity on the issues of the day. A new expert file report, Academic Experts and the Media in America, is sharing the benefits and realities of working with journalists. Peter Ricciuti is a senior professor of practice at Tulane University. He's an expert in finance, investments, valuation, equity research, financial modeling, and financial analysis. He was also a participant in this report. Thanks so much for joining us today, Peter. Hey, thank you. Business, the economy, investments, these are all hot topics, no matter what the circumstances. Do you see many of your colleagues feeling uncertain or hesitant about sharing their academic expertise with the media? I do, and more, more so than usual. Generally, a lot of academics just don't want to be out there with the media anyway. They're very uncomfortable. Uh, that's not why they got into teaching. Um, but I think more so now, because it seems like whatever you say, somebody is interpreting as that's the, that's the blue explanation or that's the red explanation. And uh, you're really not doing any of that, but people are so tuned in to the fact like what side are you on? And that's added a little bit more controversy. And if anything, it's made professors less likely to want to get involved in this. Well, it can be a stressful proposition, especially when you know you're speaking to huge, impressionable audiences through mainstream media. How have you become more comfortable about sharing your academic work with journalists when there's demand for an expert opinion? One thing is, um, is I just think the attitude. Uh, most, I think a lot of professors feel like they're, they've got their back to the wall and they're being, uh, these questions are like darts at them. And I, one of the things I like to do is develop a little bit of relationship before the interview, try to get a, a sense for who they are, and, um, and just put your, put your best ideas forward. Almost all these interviews I do, I would say 70% of them are taped. And you've got to feel that the person on the other side is not going to try to make you look bad. And uh, so I think there's a little bit of trust on both sides. And when you've done a lot of them and they've gone well, you just don't, that, that level of apprehension is gone. And, uh, and of course, it is very much a function, uh, just like they say about public speaking in general, you, you do it enough and it gets better and more comfortable. And there's no book you can read or anything else. It's, it's, it's just experience. Practice makes perfect. Yes, <laughs> or better, at least. <laughs> Aside from the joy that comes from sharing the focus of your career passion and helping people with that information, what have the rewards or benefits been in terms of the media engagement you've undertaken, not only to you and your work, but to your university and the community as a whole? Uh, that's the thing I'm most proud of, really. It, and it's all these different levels. It's a great way to get your university out there, um, you know, particularly on these, you've got to do a lot of the local stuff, which, you know, a lot of professors think is, you know, you have to get it down to, they think it's pablum, for instance, you know, to be able to, of course, the truth of the matter is that what people need to know is that the ability to bring a complicated subject down to a piece where everybody in the community can understand it, isn't that you don't know it enough, it means you're, you're superior that you can, you can do that. And I think, that has to get through the minds of, 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 of professors. A lot of times you hear professors being interviewed and it's just, it's just, they're, it's the nerdism of them because that's all they do all day. And um, I don't think they go to enough parties because you know, you, if you start speaking like that before you know it, you're alone. And uh, that's one of the, one of the dropping, but I think it great, great exposure for the university. Like, you know, our program has been in, the Wall Street Journal and CNN and Barron's and the New York Times, you couldn't pay for that. You really, you really can't. And, um, and I think one of the mistakes people make is they think that don't worry, public relations will get you in there or whatever, but the best way, and they, and they do a great job, but the best way is find something you like and, um, and pitch it yourself. You pitch it to them. One of the things they don't understand about media is that there's a guy or a woman at a desk thinking, what the hell are we going to put on the air tonight? And, um, and if you give it to them, and, and just, uh, frankly, if you show the passion for what you're doing, and it's not somebody on the outside that's kind of pitching you, I think it really, really comes through. And I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of advantages. I did a lot of media early on. I started in 87 when the market crashed. And, um, and uh, you know, I've turned it into a speaking career. I've given 
1,200 speeches around the country. It's, it's very lucrative. Uh, it's moved over to, I have a radio show on NPR now. We interview entrepreneurs. I've written my second book. And uh, I think that, that makes a big, uh, big difference. Uh, I can't think of another, I can't think of a more valuable thing you could do, to be honest. And when you're sharing that expertise, ultimately, you're helping people with gems of wisdom, particularly during tough economic times. Oh, absolutely. And, and the misinformation that's out there now, or the skewed from the, particularly the cable sides, it's just maddening. Um, and to be in the center, uh, and be from a university, really, the reason they're coming to that university in the first place is that this is considered to be like an area that it just isn't being influenced by one, one side or the other. And so whatever we're seeing, we're gonna see it five, tenfold uh, going forward. And so people have to be ready. I think one of the problems is, is that university professors in general are trying to get tenure. And this isn't one of the things that's on the tenure track. And so what you need is you need a dean or somebody at a higher level to say, this is gonna be a factor in the way you're viewed going forward. It, it's not a waste of your time over to the side. And um, just the way research is part of their life and teaching is part of their life, getting these words out into the community. I've given, you know, like I speak all the time at Rotaries and Kiwanis clubs, and I guess they don't think that's much, but you're, you're representing the university. They'll probably never meet the president. They might never go to your campus. You're, you're, the, you're the universities as far as they're, they're concerned. Um, and it, it works out, it works out great. And you, yeah, I remember when this first started for me it was the market crashed in 87 and they didn't want to go to news outlets, didn't want to go to brokerage firms because it looked like they were promoting them or something. And I remember everybody else was being interviewed and saying like, they said like, what happened today? And it'd be like uh, partial alpha divided by partial beta continued to be in the, uh, and it's like, thinking, and I came in and they said, what was going on in the market today? I said, there were more, buy there were just more sellers than buyers. It was like a hundred guys all trying to get out the same small revolving door. And it's like, bang. So you have, an, you have a metaphor, um, you're short. You, the other thing is, I, and this sounds a little bit bad, but you want to be able to speak in sound bites, which some people view as negative. But you got to be able to get your point across in five to, to 10 seconds. And you, you know it. You can, and you can see when you're being interviewed because their eyes light up. You know, they realize that when I go back to the studio, I already know what I'm going to cut and put in here. So you make it easier on them and then they keep coming back. And then you get in a Rolodex somewhere. I know there aren't Rolodexes anymore, but you, and they continue to call you for all these different stories. And it's, it's pretty terrific. Well, and, and right now with the news media credibility at an all time low, it's pretty important for journalists to be including academic expertise um, as part of the credible sources in their reporting. Absolutely. And if you can get the reputation of being an understandable, easy to work with person, you're just going to, you're going to, it, it's going to get to the point where maybe it's a little overwhelming to you, but they're going to be there all the time. And the other thing that's helped a lot is particularly during the pandemic, but always is the idea that they don't have to be in the same city you're in. I mean, it used to be somebody wanted to do a story and they'd come to New Orleans and all. That was a pretty big commitment, but now it's no problem at all. And, uh, um, I don't know where that comes. I guess what happens is not only were you good with that particular journalist and you were friendly and you gave them what they needed and you were understandable, but I think there must be some web where all the other journalists see that you were interviewed. Uh, I know this is true. And, and that worked out and they put them in their Rolodex. And before you know it, you've really got some, and it is, you know, being pseudo famous is, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Well, you, you talked a little bit about incentivizing communication. Is there more that universities could be doing to get more of their academics out there? I think so. I, I, uh, we do this pretty well at Tulane, but I think you need a centerpiece. You need somebody in, usually it's PR, that that, per, that journalist knows that they call in there and they say, I need someone who um, knows about the sex lives of elephants. And, uh, and it's like, oh, Professor Johnson, I'll have him right lined up with you. Because I sometimes laugh. Sometimes I'm on the university campus and think, anything you want to know is here in these buildings. I don't know where to find them, but they're right there. So if you can help sort it out for people, 
And, um, and then of course the PR person begins to know which professors are more, uh, more apt to, to agree with something, do something like this, but they, they've all got to step up to the plate. I, I think that's, I really believe that's part of your job at the university is to represent that. I mean, because when you come on TV, that's going to have, uh, or any media outlet, that's somebody's going to be thinking about where should my child go to school or an alum hears it and thinks, God, I got a great education there. I hope my kid goes there. Maybe I donate some money. It's, it doesn't end. Um, when that student leaves the, the building, that's not where the end is. It's, it's hopefully uh, lifetimes we're, we're going to see uh, things like this. Well, like you say, academic expertise is credible, it's reliable, and there's great value and benefit all around when it's harnessed by the media. Thank you so much, Peter Ricciuti, for joining us and sharing your experience with the project Academic Experts and the Media in America. Thank you.